In this video I want to talk a little bit about protection circuitry used in some multimeters. Recently I was watching one of Dave's videos, number 832, where he was reviewing a Keysight U1282A. One of the things I noticed during the video is Keysight is using two gas discharge tubes as part of their protection. We can see the GDTs are marked 201411. I suspect the part is made by Little Fuse and is a SL1411 series, but I'm not sure of that. That series is not offered as a 2kV part. The meter's input is designed to handle 1000 volts DC. It's Cat3 1000 volt rated, so it should handle an 8kV surge with a 2 ohm source impedance. So I would assume that the GDT is rated for something over 1000 volts because you wouldn't want it to turn on with DC applied. So I'm assuming the 2000 on the tube designates it's a 2kV part. Without having uh, detailed information about the meter, it's really hard to say what's actually in there. So I'd like to start out by saying don't attempt to modify your own handheld meter. If you think that you're adding components to make the meter safer, you really have no idea. You may be able to make it survive a test like what I'm doing, but that doesn't necessarily mean the meter is going to be safer. These tests I'm about to show are not going to prove or disprove the Keysight design. Obviously we don't know what components they have and we don't have the actual meter. So a lot of things come into play when you're looking at how a meter actually survives these tests. Circuit board creepage for example will come into play. So again looking at Dave's video, we know that the part is marked 201411. If we look at the layout of the circuit board, there's a common input terminal that ties to two PTCs through a high voltage resistor and into the gas discharge tube and then return back through the ground path. These two circuits are in parallel, not in series. So what I'd like to do is build up a small test circuit. And this test circuit is going to have a high voltage resistor, a PTC, a gas discharge tube, some MOVs, some pull down resistors, and a couple of transistors for a clamp. We'll have jumpers on the board where we can enable different clamps. Then what we're going to do is supply a surge pulse to the input and we're going to monitor what the output waveform looks like at this point. With all the meter testing that I've performed, there's definitely some trends as far as what components in the front end fail. If we look at the high voltage input resistor, I've seen that fail one time. The PTCs, I've seen the outside sheathing crack. Some of them will actually just arc across the outside if they're uncoated, and other ones where the PTC actually came apart. The MOVs, I've never seen fail. Normally what happens is some diodes or transistors that are used as a high speed clamp fail. These are some of the components that I've actually pulled off some of the meters. I would say by far the biggest failure that I see is the actual ICs. Unfortunately when the IC fails the meter is no longer serviceable. What I am finding is some of the meters are designed well enough where the input protection actually saves the IC from damage. So the way I came up with this circuitry is I looked at one of the meters that passed my test and then I measured the values of the different components and then I selected components that appear to work roughly the same as those components. But again I really have no idea what components even in that meter are actually being used. I'll be using a 1K 2 watt resistor. This will be made by TE. This resistor is flame proof and it's pulse withstanding. This resistor is designed to handle a high energy pulse. For the PTC, I'm going to be using a 1K device as well. This is a 6.5 millimeter disc. It's a part number YKD100N1000. This device is rated for 265 volts and it's rated to carry a maximum of 30 milliamps. For the gas discharge tube, I'm going to be using a little fuse part. This part is a CG32.0L. If we supply a 100 volt per microsecond pulse, the part will break down at 2500 volts. At 1 kV per microsecond, it will break down at 2750. With DC, its breakdown voltage is between 1600 and 2400 volts. This part has a capacitance of less than 1.5 picofarads. That's one of the benefits of using a gas discharge tube, is they have very low capacitance. One of the downsides is they also switch very slow. Next I have two MOVs in series. These are a part number 07D821K. There's two of these in series. They're rated for 1355 volts each. 
that's their clamping voltage they're rated for 40 joules and 1.2 kiloamps these are both seven millimeter discs to the right of that I have three 3.9 mag resistors in series and the meter that I'm modeling this after these resistors are switched to ground when the meter is either an AC or DC volts. To write of that, I have two transistors. These are part number 2SC1623-L6. This is the actual transistor that's used in this particular meter. You can see the collector is tied to the base in both transistors and they're tied emitter back to back. It's just basically two diodes back to back. On this particular meter, the clamp is enabled in the resistance, capacitance, and also in the continuity test. One of the things I should mention about this circuitry is when I talk about the diodes and transistor clamps failing, this is exactly what I'm talking about. That's a very rare occurrence that I've seen any failures in the front end circuitry. All the stuff that I see fail is typically downstream of this. So these clamps and the ICs that follow this. This is my test board. I just carved this out of a chunk of FR4. These two are the input terminals. This is the common ground. This is our high voltage 2 watt resistor. Again, this is a 1K. Next to that we have the PTC. Again, this device is also a 1K part. And here we can see the gas discharge tube. Followed by our two MOVs. Underneath here is our three resistors in series and up here are our diode clamps. These jumpers here are used to select which circuit I want to test and this is our output 10 mega ohm resistor. And again to be clear we don't know the actual parts that are used either on the meter that I'm modeling this after or on the key sight meter. What I'm hoping to demonstrate is the difference between the two clamping techniques because I know everything fails downstream of this if the GDT, for example, were to switch slower than the MOVs, I would be concerned that sensitive ICs or transistors or diode clamps would actually fail. So let's go ahead and hook this thing up and we'll take some measurements. I've got the transient generator programmed for 5,000 volts and it's connected to our test circuit. A couple of things about this circuit. The black on here is Corona Dope. This is here just to prevent a high voltage breakdown. You can see I've cut slits these are underneath the gas discharge tubes in the MOVs. It's also beneath the high voltage resistor. This shouldn't have any problem at 5,000 volts. And we're just using our homemade test probe. So the 10 mega ohm resistor will be floating and we're going to be probing this top node. For the first test, the two transistors will be removed from the circuit. We'll connect the three 3.9 mega ohm resistors and we'll connect the two MOVs. The two MOVs have a maximum breakdown of 1.3 kilovolts. So the maximum clamping voltage should be roughly 2.7 kilovolts. Okay, we'll give it a single transient. The LaCroix is currently set for 1000 volts per division and 50 microseconds per division. As you can see here it's clamping roughly 2.6 kilovolts and then it settles down pretty quick I've changed a couple of settings on the scope we're going to capture one more waveform with the MOVs okay this is with the same 1 kilovolt per division vertical scale at 500 nanoseconds per division You can see how quickly the MOVs respond to this transient. Clamp it pretty good and then it starts to decay. We're going to change the jumper from the MOVs over the gas discharge tube. We'll apply a single transient. So this is currently with 10 microseconds per division. And this real sharp peak here is our gas discharge tube. We can see here after it fires, it basically clamps it to ground. You can see this very high voltage pulse here. It's going right off the screen. This is currently 500 nanoseconds per division. You can see it's going right off the screen. 
it's not surprising again it's a thousand volts per division we're driving this with a 5,000 volt pulse and this would be my concern is that this higher voltage pulse going downstream may actually cause some of the components to break down and cause them to fail you know and we really don't know without testing it so I'm not really sure what we've learned from running this it did allow you to see the difference between the two waveforms obviously we're seeing a much higher voltage with a gas discharge tube that's pretty much expected um, but yeah as far as how the actual key sight meter would behave I think in the end you just have to buy one and try it so I hope the video was helpful till the next meter